Google Maps and Google Earth are more or less considered the same tools. But is that really the case? It's a question worth asking. If you search for Google Maps and Google Earth on Google, the first question people ask is whether Google Maps and Google Earth are the same thing. In this video, we will demystify it all. We will shed some light on Google Earth and compare side by side the differences between our two protagonists. I'm Francois from Scrub.io and today we are going to compare Google Maps and Google Earth. Let's start with the basics. Google Earth was created in 2001 and Google Maps in 2005. The most obvious thing when we place these names side by side is that they are both owned by Google, which explains their apparent similarity. However, when you dig deeper, some differences emerge, particularly in the platforms they offer. Google Maps can be used in two ways, via a mobile app or on the web. Google Earth, on the other hand, has three uses a mobile app, the web, and a desktop application called Google Earth Pro. We will come back to that. Let's compare apples to apples, starting with the web version. Here is what I get when I open Google Maps in a private window, and here is what I get when I open Google Earth. On Google Maps, I get a direct view of my location, while on Google Earth, by default, I'm positioned at the Greenwich Meridian. To get my location, I need to click an additional button. Alright, let's say we will overlook that for now. Now, let's zoom out a bit. Got it? Google Maps is a 2D map, while Google Earth is a 3D map. And this has consequences in terms of proportions. Let's take Greenland as an example. On Google Maps, Greenland appears enormous, big enough to stretch across Africa or South America from hand to end. But on Google Earth, it immediately appears much smaller. This is what's called the Mercator projection. Regions close to the poles are disproportionately larger than those near the equator. And in this regard, Google Earth presents a view closer to reality. Now let's get straight to the point. Point by point, what are the differences between Google Maps and Google Earth? First criterion, popularity. I am on Android with my phone and Google Maps was pre-installed by default, while Google Earth wasn't. For this video, I had to download the app from the Play Store. You might say, Francois, it's no big deal. That's a detail. Well, not surely. It's actually quite representative of the popularity of both tools. Google Maps is a tool for everyone, while Google Earth has a more niche use. Second criterion, Search. Both applications have a search bar. Great. Let's search for a restaurant for tonight. On Google Maps, the system works flawlessly. The top section displays pins with ratings, while the bottom gives a visual list of different restaurants. For each one, you can get directions with a single click. On Google Earth, you either have the pins or the list, not both on the same screen. Let's not mention that the list is way shorter and much more basic. For me, it's a clear win for Google Maps. Third criterion, available information. Clicking on a pin reveals detailed information. On Google Earth, you see the name, photos, address, coordinates, and phone number. That's it. On Google Maps, you get the name, photos, address, coordinates, phone number, features, opening hours, website, rating, number of reviews, reviews breakdown, individual review details, description, online menu, peak hours, and that's it. I think so. So another knockout victory for Google Maps. Yes, Google Maps is much more than just a navigation tool. It's an endless database. You type a profession and a place and you get your list of prospects. And what if I tell you that this list of prospects is right at your fingerprints? You only need to go to Scrub.io. Scrub.io is the ultimate tool for scraping Google Maps. Easy as I said, you insert a category and a location and you have access to your list. This list can be filtered. For example, I can have access to only leads including at least 
one email address and finally I can get my CSV or Excel file and by clicking the link in the description you can get your first 200 leads free of charge. Let's stick with the third criterion available information because during my research I made an interesting discovery. The larger a place is, the more official a place is, the more relevant the information provided by Google Earth becomes. For example, if I click on France, I'm immediately shown information worthy of a report. The capital, the government, population, surface area, none of this appears on Google Maps. And it doesn't stop there. The same applies when you search for a city or even a neighborhood or a historical monument. If I click on the Pantheon, I can directly see a list of those who are buried there. In this sense, Google Maps provides more touristic information. Whereas Google Earth focuses more on geographical data. And what if that was the true added value of Google Earth? Since the beginning of this video, it's been unclear what justifies its existence. Google Maps is well known, serves as a navigation tool, and is used daily by hundreds of millions of people. Google Earth, on the other hand, lacks all of that. But it has one advantage, its exploration capabilities. Of course, both tools have features that align with this purpose. They both offer features like Street View or Immersive View. But you are missing an important point, the desktop application, Google of Pro. This version offers unique functionalities, the ability to access archived imagery, the privilege of exploring the sky, the moon, or Mars, the option to save KML files used for geographical data. One can imagine numerous fields where this can be useful. Architecture, geography, environmental studies. One thing is certain, with an outdated interface, Google Earth Pro was never intended for mass market use. However, it does have an educational value, or rather a professional value. That wraps us this comparison between Google Maps and Google Earth. I'm displaying the final summary table on the screen. If you are looking to gather leads for your business, you can take a look at Scrap.io. 100 free leads available via the link in the description. Make sure to subscribe. There is nothing else to see. The end.